Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Modeling Time with me, Brian Banna. Um, in this episode, or in this little series, I'm going to do an experiment. Um, I know I've got to get the locomotives done and stuff like that, but right now I'm in a waiting period, so I'm working on freight cars again. So I'm going to do uh, an experiment, something that I've been wanting to do for a long time, try it out. I mean, if it works out, great. I've got a nice looking freight car. If it doesn't work out, I've got a grit blaster out in the garage that I can just blow all the paint off and start over again. So let me go over what I'm going to do. Um, I've been on a kick for the last uh, couple years, yeah, about a couple years, um, called my, my Nostalgic Series. And um, it has to do with the N-scale cars that I had when I was a kid. Now, this one wasn't one of my favorites, but recently my brother sent me all of the stuff that he had when he was a kid. And upon getting it, I opened the box, and lo and behold, there was a bunch of my stuff mixed in with it. And the stuff that I thought I had lost, and then going through everything, I was like, wow, I, I thought I lost this stuff, and it, it came back, and, and, and things like that. So... This wasn't one of my favorite cars, but it was a car I had, and after going through everything, it was like, wow, I really like, I'd like to do this car in HO scale. Now, you got to keep in mind, in N scale at the time, when I was, um, I think I was, let me see, about seven years old, maybe, when I got this, when I got these things, or when I started in trains, six or seven years old. Um, all box cars, you know, all 40 foot box cars were built off the same size. So whether it was a wood side box car or a steel side box car, didn't matter. They were the same size um, so that they used all the same underframes and stuff. So what I've done is I'm, I'm doing this car here. This car probably never existed in real life, but I really like it. It's a wood side um, with steel ends and steel doors. So I got the Accurail uh, 7100 series to use to represent this car. Now, I've recently just finished doing the decals for it, and um, <clears throat> this big B&M logo here, I've broken up into a bunch of little pieces so it can fit over the ribs and things like that. Um, so I drew up the sides of the car, and then I, I fit the decal over it, and then I cut it and split it and, and all that so that it'll sit properly or on this side sit properly over the over these ribs so so the first or not the first thing so what i've got done um i've got the car built There's really not much um going on when you're building accurail cars i mean you got the brake wheel was already in there but i took it off and cleaned it up the big thing about the accurail cars is just take them apart look them over if there's any flash or any mold parting lines just clean those up I put the underframe together. Um, this car was of the original type where it had the pressed in pins where you press the lid in and had a pin in it. So I changed it out for screw in um, a, a, a coupler um, or draft gearbox cover. Now this has the push pins for the trucks and I, I'm going to leave them. Um, <clears throat> I think it'll be okay. On, on some of the other ones, what I've done is I've drilled it out and put a new pin in there and, and threaded it. But I'm going to try to leave it on this one, see how it goes. No, I think it'll be okay. If anything, I can always lightly glue the pin in with some white glue. And that way, if I ever need to take it out, it's easy to break that out. So I do that. Um, I've got the, the roof walk, of course. Um, I'm using Tahoe Model Works 40-ton trucks. And I've got the Katie couplers all grit blasted and, and such. So my plan is to make this somewhat of a distressed looking boxcar with the paint peeling off and, and the gray old wood underneath. So what I've done is a long time ago, not a long, maybe about a year ago, I bought this AK Interactive um, old wood, our old and weathered wood. So it comes with with these colors you know you got your light gray your darker gray and then some wood colors and what's this burnt umber shoot i can't see anything i don't got my glasses on so we got burnt umber we got medium brown uh medium gray which looks a lot more like wood than gray um light gray brown then middle gray and light gray so here's what i'm gonna do 
So we got wood in here. Wood, 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 wood. Same on the other side. So after watching some videos, they said it's best to paint paint the areas that you can do wood black first. So I'm going to paint just I'm going to just use the airbrush and paint in these black. I don't care if it oversprays stuff. I'm just going to paint in these areas black. So I'll get that done. The whole under frame is going to be black. So I'll paint that. I'll paint all of this black. Um, the roof walk I'll paint black because it's wood. Uh, the roof on these cars is steel, so I'm not going to paint that. And then I'm going to paint the trucks black. Um, the paint that I'll use is Steinol Res um, Black Surface Primer. Um, it's a really good paint. I like how it works. It dries really thin or it, it levels out real nicely and dries really, really good. So after I paint this black and let it sit for a few days, I'm going to paint the wood portions this middle gray. Um, I'm just going to, again, I'm just going to get in there and just try to spray. I don't care if it oversprays anything. I'm not worried about that. So I'm just going to spray in there and get the wood parts and the, and the roof walk and stuff. Now, the underframe I don't care about. You don't see it, but it's black and um, it sits up underneath the, the um, boxcar a bunch. And it'll get weathered with um, pigments and stuff like that. So I'm not worried about distressing the wood on the underframe. This is about getting the model done and not spending weeks and months on end doing one model. The trucks and the, and the wheel sets are over on the paint bench and I'll get those done in, um, I'll get those weathered as well. So the trucks will get painted Steinol Res Black, the underframe will get painted Steinol Res Black, and all these wood parts in here will get painted. So after I paint the gray on, I'll let that sit for a little bit, and then I'm going to put a wash over that. I forgot to get that out. Let me get that out real quick. Uh, where is it at here? Here we go. It's the AK Interactive um, enamel wash for wood. So I'm going to put that over it and uh, let that dry. So that's what's really nice about these um, Accurail cars is they put the wood grain into the into the wood and on the roof and stuff like that. So this uh, application of this will hopefully get down into that wood grain and make it pop a little bit. So I'll let that dry for a while, maybe a couple days, and then I'm going to come back with the light gray and give it a dry brush over the high points of the wood. So that'll give me the dark gray down below, the um the the black wa or the dark the dark brown wash um, into the crevices and into the grain. And then it'll give me the highlights of the light gray over the top. And then once that's done, I'm hoping that it'll look kind of like, what was that? I'm hoping it'll look kind of like this right here. That's what I'm going for. So when that's done, then I'm going to give it a coat of satin varnish and let that dry for like a day or so. I know the, you know, letting, letting it dry and, and stuff is what's going to take a while. But I, I don't think I need to let it dry that long. But, you know, I've got other things to do too. So letting it dry will be fine. Okay, so when that's all dry, then I'm going to come back and I'm going to mask off the wood areas. Get the wood all masked off. And then I'm going to take a chipping color, which is a dark brown uh, color. Kind of like, I uh, should have had everything ready. But kind of like this experiment I'm doing, but basically that color. It's a dark brown and stuff. It looks really good when it shows up as chips. So I'll spray that on all the metal parts. I'll get that, you know, I'll have all the wood mask. I'll spray that on the metal parts. There's a wood uh, frame at the bottom, one at the top, and then all of these cross members, the ladder, uh, the roof, the ends, those will all get sprayed in a... Um, in a uh, in this chipping color then when it's all done I will um, take all the masking off the wood and I'll give the whole car another satin varnish when that's done um, I'm going to give the car a coat of hairspray so everything will be covered in hairspray now this is a 
is a dark blue. I have the true color paint blue, but I think I'm going to try to mix it up in, um, what is that, um, Mission Models paint, because it's a really good paint for chipping. So I don't need to do anything to get the, um, the paint to be a uniform color, because it's a darker blue, so the dark will cover nicely over the, the uh, gray and the weathered gray and the, um, the steel chipping color. So once that's done, or once the hair, hairspray dries, which it dries pretty quickly, then I will shoot it in this blue, and then I'll start going and distress, you know, taking it off, you know, certain areas. I don't want it to be completely chipped. I just want, you know, little pieces here and there to have that paint pulled off and, and such. And then when it's time to put the decals on, what I really like about the um, the highball graphics decals is you can distress them real nicely. Now the film gets very fragile, but it's still usable. So. Um, or you can still work with it. So I'll I'll distress the um, the the like the logo a little bit, take some of the ink off and stuff like that, and lay it in. And hopefully I'll have a box car that doesn't look like super tattered, but look like it has seen some um, use over the years. You know, you know, freezing and thawing and uh, and sun baking and, and and stuff like that. The roof will probably be very very rusty on this car and, and uh, the uh, paint will be heavily chipped off the, the roof walk and, and stuff. And it'll just be a, a, like a severely stressed car, but not, not too much. Um, so we'll see how that goes. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get these parts painted black. All right, so now I have the, um, the paint on, or the black paint. So I've got, I've got the underframe that out of there. There we go. So I've got the underframe painted black. I've got the trucks painted black. I've got the roof walk painted black. And I've got the body wood panels painted black. Now the black that I use, I said I use Steinal Res. It's this stuff right here. Um, it's S. NR4003 I think that's on focus there we go and I paint the couplers Steinal Res Primer Gray which is well the part number has worn off of it but it's the, the um, they only make one gray so it's that and these are the couplers. And now you might think that that clogs the, uh, let me see, how's that? That might clog the knuckle, but the knuckle moves just fine. You put a spring in there, and i got to weather these too. So so that's um, basically takes care of putting on the, um, the black um, base coat. And uh, next up will be the gray. So I'll let this dry overnight, and I'll put the gray on. Um, either tomorrow or the next day, depending on what I'm working on. So this project will be on and off, but uh, uh, the decals are being printed now by Highball Graphics. And I got another set that he's printing out that I'm really looking forward to. It's the Ohio Seamless Pipe, or Ohio Seamless Tube Company, or T Ohio Seamless Tube Division um, uh, gondola. So... And it's not the yellow one, it's the gray one that AHM did, but I'm going to put it on the, um, the Athern 52-foot, um, 6-inch, that's not a 52-foot, 6-inch um, riveted side gondola. But I like that gondola a lot, so I designed the, the uh, decals for that car. But right now I'm going to work on this car, and see how it turns out. I think it'll be a fun experiment.